as of Tuesday evening, 23 Colorado football players have entered the transfer portal since Saturday's spring game concluded, bringing the buffs down to, I would love, I mean, I know Caleb knows. Yeah, well, let me double check. Do you know how many returning scholarship players they have? I actually don't. How many? Guess. Out of an 85 allocation, what do you got? I'm going to go 50. Lower. 40? Lower. 25? Lower. You've got to be kidding me. I'm not kidding you. I've read it. I did my research. 12? 16. 16 returning scholarship players from last year's team. Now, he brought – Deion Sanders brought in his – Son to play quarterback, and so there are other guys he brought with him from uh, the uh, uh, the uh, Black College Association, which slips in my mind the name of it all of a sudden. So he's brought in some real players, but 16 returning scholarships from last year. Does this officially take Dion and remove Lane Kiffin as the most brash coach in college? football on the message board who's the most brash is it lane kiffin or is it Deion sanders and travis said colorado is dead travis i would have argued with you till the end of time two months ago but i wonder a little bit if Dion's in over his head you can't I mean, bring that program 16. yes like that's Six. the only i mean that's bad it's it's bad. I will say, look, I think the I I think Deion Sanders. I don't know if he's in over. I think Deion Sanders is trying a new method that's never been tried in college football. I don't think it's going to work, and it's going to expose itself. But I will say, for people that say Deion's killing Colorado, you can't kill a dead program. This is this is that that's that has been still or saying to the dead guy and start seeing huts. You just punch your last ticket, amigo. I mean, like here's the for the people I talk to in college coaching circles, they think this year is going to be a unmitigated disaster we're talking about two or three wins for the buffs and that would be actually a good year i think they won one last year so and gene pointing out he just lost a four-star cornerback to the transfer portal that he brought with him from jackson state a bunch of these guys are going to get up there and be like this isn't as warm and you know well known as as when i was in jackson state i mean they were stars down there dion turned them into stars so he has to have a bunch of people believe year two is going to be where to judge him and that'll be 2024 and we can say if, if he doesn't win five six games become bowl eligible then there's a real problem but as far as brashness move aside lane kiffin you ain't even close and the the you know, Lane Kiffin sends out some goofy tweets and, and and guys, you don't want to hear this, but Josh Heupel tells kids when they can't play at Tennessee, can't play at the SEC level, they need to move on. Uh, Brian Mars is, is an example. Um, we could go on and on and on about examples. So that part of it's not terrible. I think the widespread aspect of it is scary. And the other thing that Dion Travis pointed it out, and I saw that this morning, um, He's locking out players from uh, seeing their practice film. Now you can all you can always go back and look at games, but practice film is important, I believe, because theoretically nobody's watching. You can you can judge a lot by players' uh, personal interactions with other players. You can judge a lot by um, just their body language. And if they're good team players or not, Caleb, I, I mean, I guess this is the one, it was a tight end that he wanted to stay, but now he's not sharing the practice film, which was just, that was just common decency back in the day. Dion is basically telling these guys that they are pros. He's taking what you and I have said of your pros. We can criticize you because you're making money. He's taken that to the next level. And I'm sorry. I think it's a little too harsh. I was big on the Dion train to see what happened. I think this is a little bit harsh. I think to come back with 16 returning scholarship players, to be locking out other teams for seeing practice film, I think this is about 10 times more egregious than anything 
that Lane Kiffin's done, with the exception of leaving Tennessee in the middle of the night. Um, and Deion Sanders, until he wins, and even if he does, with a lot of these families, is going to be the villain of college football for the foreseeable future, Caleb. Before I get into my spiel on this, let's just say one possible defense of Deion Sanders. What if he's supporting this tight end by not revealing the practice film? Because what if he's just that bad? <laughs> what if he's saying you won't get you won't land anywhere if this practice film gets out there? I'm joking, obviously. Well, I'll throw another one out at you that's kind of similar, but maybe a little bit more plausible. Maybe he just doesn't have the peeps. Okay, I mean, Colorado does not have a $100 million athletic budget like Tennessee does. Maybe he doesn't have the people to pull the, the tape. And if he's going to his personnel director and he's like, hey, I got this five-star guy in South, Florida, South California I think you need to take a look at, or I can take my time of pulling uh, uh, Johnny Lipper's tight end tape, then what are you going to pull? I, I don't think he has vast resources like when Josh Heupel landed in Knoxville, Nick Saban landed in Alabama. So that that's that's part of the curiosity to me as well. Yeah. And so let's break this down on the difference between Le Deion Sanders and Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin was brash and brasher than he should have been, but very aware of who he was and who he was competing against for recruits. Because he and you and I know he took recruiting very seriously. He I don't know anybody that works hard at recruiting than Lane Kiffin. And the reason I thought about this comparison is because both are relying heavily on the transfer portal right now. Lane's doing it because he has to, because you have talked about it. He maxes out what you can do at Ole Miss. You're just limited. Mm -hmm. Dion, I got to be honest. Here's what I think happened. I think Dion thinks his name is going to allow him to replace all this talent because he can recruit with the big boys. And here's the thing, and at, at an HBCU where you could sell an HBCU, you might get a five-star or two, and that's going to be the big difference between your school and every other school at that level. At Colorado, one, you're not selling the whole concept of building up HBCUs. You're selling come to the worst school in the Pac-12. At, at this point, you're only selling playing for you, not playing for anything else. But the you other thing... Sorry, go ahead. The other thing... Okay, yeah. The other thing I have to bring up, Dion thinks his name recruits... It doesn't out-recruit the credibility of a Nick Saban. It doesn't out-recruit the credibility of a Josh Heupel at this point or a Jim Harbaugh or any of these coaches. And also, he may think he has NFL connections. Dave, you're a 17-year-old kid looking to go to the NFL. Yeah, there's this former NFL Hall of Famer, or there's this head coach in Nick Saban who has put how many people in the NFL over the past 15 years? Who do you think has more NFL connections today to get you drafted? I also think he thinks he has more – he probably thought he had more NIL money to throw around than he did at Colorado. I think they probably oversold him a little bit, how much money they could get together. And I'm sure they've gotten together way more than they had before they hired him. But I don't know that we're talking about Tennessee top money. I don't know we're talking about any, any type of money. My question is with Deion Sanders, with what he's doing, the South's different, okay? So we, we talked about how he can – be like uh, Bill McCartney back in the days at Colorado and recruit the South California area in LA. A lot of kids want out of Compton. Their parents want them out of Compton. That is, that is a good pipeline for him. So he, he may go into there and he may win some of those kids over and it may work at Colorado because it's worked before. So I'm not discounting that, but how would he be doing in the SEC? How would he do at an Ole Miss that does have to rely on transfer portals, that does have to rely on NIL money that they don't have as much as other schools? Because he's not going to get an Alabama, even a Florida job, a Georgia job, even a Tennessee job. I mean, he's not going to get the top half of the SEC. So if he were at Ole Miss or Mississippi State, how would Deion Sanders be faring right now? Because the high school coaches – or you're recruiting from the same area. You're not bouncing into Compton every once in a while. You're going to uh, Ella J High School or wherever the place might be, and you're building a relationship with that head coach that hopes that you hope sends you two or three more prospects down the line. So, Caleb, where does he – could he coach in the SEC with this style at all? No. 
No, because again, he would be, you're right, Deion Sanders could build a pipeline into Southern California. By the way, that pipeline is not the same pipeline it used to be. It's somewhat dried up, largely because there's, you can go to Oregon, you can go to Arizona State, you can go to, I mean, there's sure. a lot of competition. And also, because of what Pete Carroll did, USC, the brand of USC is back, even though they've been down the last 10 years. And so, let to bring up Dion in the SEC, yeah, he's. You think he's going to convince a kid? For instance, we talk about we talk about Nick Saban. Let's talk about Kirby Smart. Okay, Deion Sanders, I think is from Georgia. I believe. I think he's from Atlanta, isn't he? And mm, he, sure, let me check. Go ahead. But you think honestly, Deion Sanders is going to be able to out recruit Kirby Smart for Georgia kids? Because I don't. Oh no, he's from Florida. Yeah, um, Florida. Myers. Myers. Okay, he just played for the Falcons for years. So I don't think Deion Sanders is going to be able to go to Atlanta and say, hey, I played for the Falcons and I'm Deion Sanders. Commit to me because I can sell your NFL career. I think Kirby Smart's got a lot more to sell about your NFL potential. Georgia's just had 14 players taken in the NFL draft last year. They're probably going to have another like 10 taken this year at a minimum. That sells more than this Hall of Fame cornerback from the 90s. Okay. And so I want to ask you this. Dion versus Lane Kiffin, who would have better success? We know what Lane's done in the SEC. Who would have better success in a somewhat similar approach brought to you by Campbell Cunningham, Taylor, and Han? In a somewhat similar approach, Caleb, basically Dion's is amplified immensely over Lane Kiffin. Who would have better success? Would it be Dion Sanders if he got... I don't want to say Mississippi State. I'm trying to come up with a comparable program to Ole Miss. There's really not one because they're right there in the middle. I want to say South Carolina or Auburn. Yeah. To me, is right at that second tier. Could he have success at all or have more or less success than Lane Kiffin is having and had at Ole Miss? I think, honestly, it would probably be – could I say exactly the same? Like, could I say it'd be exactly this? I think Deion Sanders' brashness is at another. You know what? No, I'm going to say he'd have less because here's one thing that Lane Kiffin, Lane Kiffin's very big into analytics because he knows that's how Ole Miss can get their advantage. You know, Deion is former player jock. He's not a guy that's going to care about analytics at all. He's probably only eye tests in that sense. And so, I think he, I think he would have far less for two reasons. One, I think Lane Kiffin is a spe- – I know you may, may not like him, but Lane Kiffin is a special offensive coach. You and I both agree with that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, One I mean, he's, he's top 10 offensive minds in, in the country based off what he's done in his career. And I think, Dion, this is something that Travis posted on the message board. I think Dion would have a lot of trouble with his flash – selling the big defensive tackles that really are the difference between being a championship contender and not in the SEC. That's what Alabama got. That's what Georgia has now got for those big war daddies in the middle. And are they going to be excited by Dion? Eh, no, probably, probably not. I mean, that's why an elite defensive line coach, as you've talked about, is the most important recruiter on your team because the defensive line coach is like, they want to, whatever you want, whatever I think about Ed Orgeron as a head coach, defensive linemen want to commit to play for Ed Orgeron. I mean, you want to play for him. And yeah. go ahead and give, call, uh, give, give Chuck Smith a call. Yeah. <laughs> defensive line. <laughs> call their, were they teammates? Right? Weren't Dion and Chuck Smith teammates at the Falcons? And they would have to be, yeah. Call Chuck yeah. Smith. And then have 13 men on the field by accident. And, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm 13. sorry. The, the difference is Dion will publicly – low number. If the over-under is at 13 and a half, I'm taking the over. The difference is Dion Sanders would publicly throw Chuck Smith under the bus, whereas Dooley privately threw him under the bus, and then they had that falling out at the end of the year. But, like, Dooley didn't – Dion Sanders would publicly be like, this guy screwed up. It was all him. <laughs> I said this about Trooper Taylor and Bruce Pearl at the time. There was a lot of flash there, but there was also a lot of substance. I – Thought that was the case with Dion. I suddenly have my doubts. It's the nicest way I can put it. <laughs>